Hi everybody, welcome to the first ever episode of College Chronicles with Tarini. This series is a series that deals with helping students, especially students gearing up for competitive exams to achieve their goals with the help of stories of other people who achieved great, brilliant scores in their competitive exams. That being said, today we have with us Sahil Kumar Barma. Sahil is a great student who has achieved a lot of uh, meritorial accomplishments in his academics. He is currently studying in IIT Madras, pursuing his BTEC in electrical engineering. So that being said, uh, I'd also like to state a few of his meritorial accolades in the past few years. Uh, in the JE Advanced, he scored an impressed, uh, he's gotten an incredible rank of 753 All India rank. In the mains, he's gotten an incredible 1905 rank. In the KVPY, he's gotten an 832 rank. And in the MET, he's gotten 807 rank. Apart from that, his percentile for his JE main was 99.7. And uh, well, uh, I don't think I have much more to say. Those records speak from themselves. So hi, Sahil, how are you doing? Would you like to please introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm doing good. And yeah, so yeah, I'm Sahil. And as you said, I'm pursuing, I'm still kind of studying in IIT Madras. And my department is electrical engineering. And nothing else, I guess, for me about just, you know, I'm currently in my second year of electrical engineering. So, so it's good. Great. So, Sal, we have a lot of questions to address today, and uh, we've had a lot of backhand questions as well. Before the podcast, we collected a bunch of questions that people appearing for JE and other engineering exams had. So we will be discussing all of that in today's session. Uh, yeah, so let's start off, I guess. Uh, do you want to start with addressing the questions first, or do you want to start with a small uh, you know, story about how you transitioned from your 10th to 11th and how you started your prep from that age. I guess I'll start with the story first of my journey. Yes. So, yeah, honest. So I was just an average student, I would be honest. In my school time, didn't know anything about what JE or was or IIT was until 10th grade. Like, no idea, nothing. All The only thing I knew was that I was interested in science. And as I was in Bangalore, so the only college I knew was ISC. So I was like... And my hopes were that, okay, if I, you know, um, the college which I wanted to go was ISC at that point. So all, yeah, as every student after 10th grade goes into some other coaching institute, like all my friends did. So I also enrolled myself into Allen after 10th, uh, I mean, during my 10th only, like giving the entrance exam and all. And then after my 10th, my preparation properly started for JE. Uh, I, I really didn't know what JE was exactly until then because my main aim was very fixed that I want to clear KVPY and then get into ISC and pursue research. Uh, and so, yeah, my main eyes uh, went on the preparation of, you know, KVPY and then we had special classes KVPY and I went with that. And then later on, I understood with more that, okay, what IITs are and what JE is and stuff like that. So mostly before 10th, there's nothing very special. I was just, I just do science in general, like, you know, do some Olympiads and do something for fun, like giving PRMOs, RMOs, and NTSC I gave. And yeah, I didn't clear NTSC. I missed my NTSC by three marks. So I couldn't, I couldn't clear first round also. That kind of hurt me. So uh, yeah, and that's why I was like, I need to get a good rank in these exams in 11, 12th. So yeah, that was there before my 10th. It was nothing special I did before 10th. Mostly just ACADs and school ACADs and then fun nothing much yeah all right great so uh what was the transition from your 10th to 11th in terms of uh, the kind of coaching you took or whatever like the kind of academic help that you took and uh, did you go to any coaching center or anything like that and if you want you can name it of course and yeah just a little bit about that as well yeah okay so before 12, 10th, I was just going for tuitions and all near my locality and then just did what is required for getting good marks in, you know, uh, school exams. And after 10th, I did join coaching as everyone did. And so, yeah, if I have a name, it was mostly Alan that's available near my area. So that was there. But uh, the, it was very big transition. Like, honestly, 
I got very, very bad marks in the initial few tests of my coaching. That was very, very bad marks because the transition is very, very steep. I felt um, like until 10th, it was what you had to do is like, you know, memorize all derivations. And then it was very simple derivation. Like you apply two to three formulas and then you do it. And most of the questions repeat over and over again. So your brain is just accustomed to, you know, just think in that direction, not much. But the moment you stepped into 11th, it's just a lot of questions, numericals, and a lot of, you know, now the thinking changes, let's say, if it, especially, you know, if you're preparing for J. So it was a very big jump. Like, I remember my marks was absolutely bad. Like, out of 300, like, that we should have some tests. So out of 300, I should get, like, around 140, 160. That's not good, I'll be honest, like, for starting. And those are easy tests, yeah. Initially, they were easy tests, and then I didn't score good. And that kind of, you know, uh, got me very, you know, scared and angry about like what is happening. Like it was the initial few days, like very, 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 you know, like I was getting, uh, you know, pissed at myself and getting very, you know, like what is happening with me. I was never this kid who used to get like these low marks. So I was like, that really it's a very big transition, and it definitely take, takes time. So it'll take time to get, and everyone has to go through it, like. If you're, you know, from a regular, if you're earlier doing just regular classes, you know, school, and then you suddenly go to the coaching, and, you know, J prep, it's a very, very big jump. And it's normal, like, don't really let it affect you. That's what I would say. All right. So that being said, let's get into a little bit of the actual game plan that you had in your 11th and 12th. So you mentioned how it was suddenly like a steep change for you from your 10th grade to your 11th grade. And I think a lot of the people who are watching currently are in the 11th grade and they've also faced that. So I've spoken to the people beforehand and a lot of people said that, uh, you know, that difference is there and I know that it is there. So uh, when it comes to that shift, how do you slowly start gearing yourself to this sudden change in the kind of portions that you have and the kind of syllabus that you have in the kind of knowledge that you have to grasp. How do you deal with that uh, in terms of the kind of, uh, not just the kind of timetable you construct for yourself, time you allot for your different activities, but also in terms of the fact that how do you keep yourself focused in this particular domain? You can, of course, split your answer into multiple parts, but uh, uh, basic idea is how do you deal with this entire change? So how did you deal and how do you think people generally deal with it? That would help. Okay, yeah. So starting off, first thing you said is that um, how do you deal with all these sudden changes happening? Okay, so I would say coming to the ACADS point of view, that getting, I would say first thing is let's say you are writing a lot of these tests and all. Let's say people who are in coaching, they're writing all these tests coming up. You know, you'll have weekly tests or monthly tests and all, and the grades are gonna be will be very bad. Like they're definitely gonna demotivate you because I would say that what i have noticed is a lot of these people okay for me personally i was like a you can see we were one of the few kids who were like you know let's say not the toppers of our club but one of the few people who got good marks in few subjects like science maths and all and then suddenly you go to this coaching and then you realize that when the your entire list comes out like who are the toppers overall from bangalore or from karnataka you see that you're somewhere in hundreds or thousands and then you just start getting the I mean, that's the first time in your life you realize that that you're no more the uh, what's the key? you know the smartest kid in the room you realize there's so many so many other people are smarter and that will definitely definitely demotivate you you'll also feel like what is happening i'm putting so much effort and all but yeah so i would say key, first thing is ignore that it's gonna take time for you to you know climb the ladder of the ranks you will it will take It'll take one year or entire two years, you know, you might see the results of this effort at the end of 12 years, uh, the end of 12 years, sorry. So ignore that first thing, the rank, initially ignore it. It's fine. It will come, it'll be bad. It's fine. Your aim, first thing, first your aim should be key. Whatever the concepts I'm learning in the class or whatever I'm doing, that has to first go clearly to my mind. I should understand what is happening. Uh, this because you will realize later key the water you learned in initial days of 11th grade is gonna be used later in your 11th and 12th especially so if your let's say foundation not good you cannot do a lot of stuff so it's gonna like 
keep coming back again 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 it's going to just mess up other things also so first thing important is ki just focus on understanding everything and this is more crucial because you see the jump is high so if you really focus properly in building a foundation now is going to be very smooth right later for understand later concepts so that's first thing now second thing is you will see now the f- amount of effort you put will be drastically like will be very very much you know like change how much before like let's say before in 10th grade let's say board preparation also you can just start one month before your boards and you'll still get a you know 90 plus or 95 plus grades in your board it's no it's no it's not hard it's very easy so let's say even for exams you had some internal school exams you'll study what one week if you to start studying one week before or let's say few days before or one day before so and still get a very good like you can be the topper of your class there's no hard but now j is like kind of a what is it like you need to put constant effort every day like and by constant effort it's not just like one or two hours but like a lot of hours like i would be honest i okay for me personally i was preparing my entire 11th to 12th covid time so i had zero physical activity so my entire day was basically just i would say ki uh, attend my school in the morning hours and then allen and then self study or just relax watch movies something like that initial days was just the, that only so i would say i was i ended up spending a lot of time just studying studying and not just studying like revising concepts solving questions and all those things so i saw him just continuously doing that it's not just that i was chilling a lot like just movies or something like that also on the side but yeah definitely the amount of effort i put uh in my during that time has completely changed compared to what was in the 10th grade like 10th grade i should never study like it was just me few days before exam done that's it but now it was i had to put effort because as i realized my grades started dropping like my marks were decreasing or not coming that good how much i expected i was like i was forced to just put more and more effort and so yeah the only main thing you'll, you'll be you should be ready is to put that much amount of hours of work like you must i would say you will have to call, like sacrifice few other things that you did before like you might have to reduce the number of hours you play or number of time, how much time you spend with your friends or let's say how much time you spend watching shows tvs or on on social media and all so you would definitely have to lose on those part and put that all of the time into study so initial days you'll feel a lot of friction because about i would say you 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 mentally and physically are used to studying those many number of hours so give it time you know slowly increase the number of hours you study from let's say 2 3 4 to whatever you want to put effort regularly so this is one of the problems and i guess anything else like what was any other point we were telling to uh, answer no that was pretty much it uh a little bit about like uh, you know timetable i'll actually show you something right now and you give me your opinions about it uh, i'm sure even you know you must have seen a timetable like this with you or your friends or whatever but okay. uh, yeah sorry yeah uh, can you see the screen the timetable yes yeah it's quite popular recently yeah a lot of people have asked me about addressing this so i wanted to ask you as well did yours look anything like this you can be honest and uh-huh. it did uh or did not whatever you can just speak about the pros and cons of this type of tantrum and i'm sure that even in your group of friends and circle that uh, you had a study group with or whatever did it actually look like this and do you think this is actually beneficial to have a timetable that this uh, focused on just purely studying a little Yeah. Okay. So, uh, it's I didn't have. Okay. Initially, it was nothing like this. Like I'll be honest. I'll used to get up early in the like not in early. I used to get up like eight o'clock in the morning just before my school class, like first class. It was online, so yeah, you could just wake up eight o'clock and then just attend the class. So I woke up at eight o'clock and then tried to be awake in the first class of any physics. So I tried to be awake, but couldn't. Uh, just fall asleep and then. mostly paid attention during the computer and english classes because that was something i didn't need in my coaching everything else was taught in the coaching so yeah i and then just somehow tried to stay awake during school time but mostly just end up you know not paying that much attention also initial days i even i was very indisciplined and i couldn't keep up with the changes that i mentioned that happens from 10 to 11 yeah 
So and you had school from eight yeah. to three thirty or something, right? Eight to one. Eight to two. Eight to two. Yeah, eight to two, and then after that, Alan from I guess four thirty yeah. till seven in the night or seven seven thirty. I'm not very sure about timing. So then attend all these classes. You generally had two classes a week that time, so mm-hmm. one hour, one and a half hour each. And then mm-hmm. after that, I would just be like so exhausted. I just like I'm not doing anything. I'll just probably see TV or I'll just like be on my laptop or sometimes YouTube or something, something, some show or something. Then try to study, do assignments, school assignments or Alan assignments or whatever, and then just sleep off. Nothing very productive. Like that was my initial days. But then, as I told you, as my marks started, you know, not improving, I started putting much more effort. But still, it wasn't this bad. Like. I would be honest. Like then, my most peak productive date was like get up. Mm-hmm. I would just you know, get the morning routine done. Let's say you know, freshen up. You my, did, yeah. you know, my dad used to make me just to exercise. Some days he'd be like, "Get up, you are getting too lazy," and you know, no physical activity. So, some days exercise and then attend classes, and then once classes over, take a break for a few minutes, do some assignments of Alan that was like before, and then attend those classes. Then come back, take a break. For and a pretty good break, not let's say just for a few like 10, 15 minutes, no, or half an hour, one hour sometimes, and then prepare properly. And then I would be like by 11 o'clock and then sleep early. I was very like my parents didn't let, let me stay awake till like post 12 o'clock at all. Like I used to just, I was always going to bed by 11 o'clock at least, never beyond 12. I never stayed up beyond 12. That'd be one thing. Okay. So yeah, it was not that. At least in my 11th grade, this was not that hectic. 12th grade, I had to put some effort that I'll, we can come to, we can discuss that later once we come to that section. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so we have a few questions. We'll start, you know, addressing them as well. First question is, any tips any- for physics and maths? Is NCRT enough for the theory part and the concept part of it? Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, physics and maths, I would say maths, it's not enough NCRT, whereas physics also, I would say up till mains level is enough, but, uh, advanced level, no, it's, you need a lot of extra reference materials because, and also past year paper, like a lot of past year paper and those are things. So. Okay. So, yeah, that is- All right. Uh, Another question by Nikhil. So my boards just ended two days ago. I have CS in a month, but J mains is two days after CS exam as well. So got to start preparing. Huh. So he's asking if C- NCRT ke liye if I mean chem ke liye is NCRT enough. Yeah. I mean for mains is more than enough. Just mains, yeah. just I would say just mug up the stuffs because they just directly ask you. Even in advance, sometimes the question are direct, so it's fine. All right. Another question, NCRT related, physics, NCRT relevant. Should I open it or just focus on coaching material and NCO? Physics, NCRT, I mean, up to some level, the theory part and all of those things are fine. Uh, but yeah, NCO Verma is really important because it really has good questions. Like we see all the example questions. Those are really well, like very, one of the really good questions that help you to make the understanding you know, develop the understanding. So, uh, let's just say advanced, especially they test you a lot on your understanding. Even if you, they won't ask you some very deadly derivation or some very deadly, you know, calculation this question, they'll just test you on your conceptual. So if you, if you read HC1, it might really, really help you develop that conceptual you know, knowledge and, and NCRT yeah, up till means to a certain extent is relevant, but in my opinion, reference books are necessary and especially in today's you know cutthroat competition it's a must like you need reference material apart from ncrt all right uh okay let's address another question and then we'll get back to the continuation of 11th to 12th car transition as well and how okay. important that is uh let's okay so i know uh you hadn't prepared for met but uh, a lot of my audience is also from manipal so you can surely address that as well uh, right. but i think it is very similar to j mains so if you uh, can maybe 
uh, because I don't think you were also preparing in particular for MET, but you must have done it in a few days only. So right. what was exactly your exam type of prep for maybe JE mains or how did it even help through to entrances like Manipal entrance or something like that? Yes. Okay. So uh, M exams like MET and BITS, they're very similar because um, they test you on your speed, like how fast you can do. The questions aren't hard. Like they are not, they're not like they, you can't solve them unlike advanced and mains, but they test you in your speed and also you have extra like English and all those other topics also. Uh, at least in bits that if I remember. Uh, but to prepare for this, it's yes, the most important thing is time. Time is the most important aspect here. So, so your strategy for preparing should be more about how you write these exams rather than just uh, let's just say the home, what all subjects you prepare and all of those things. Like you don't need very deep knowledge in those topics. You can just, you know, go through NCRT, it'll be fine. But it's important that how you write this exam. So let's just say you'll be, you'll have like the, the, uh, the amount of time you require per question is very less compared to mains or advanced. So, um, you come up with a strategy for exam is important. Like how do I say it? Ki, I should be done with physics section this much amount of time. Let's say, uh, I have three hours, let's say what, uh, sort of within 40 minutes, I should be done in physics section, 20 minutes. I should be done with math section. And then, uh, guess what? Chemistry section, the remaining one hour, let's say maths. No matter what, let's say if I have to skip the question, I should know when to skip a question. Like, let's say I read a question, 15 seconds. I don't get the answer. Skip. Let's just say if the option is there to skip and move on to the next question and all, because uh, rather than trying to solve this one question, which takes, let's say some five minutes, I can rather do an easier two two easier questions, which just take, which will give you more marks. So planning an exam attempting strategy is more important. So if you're preparing, let's say the person is preparing for MET, I would recommend solve as many papers as possible and time yourself. That's the more important thing. And secondly, one of the most important, like you might face a problem is that the exam hall pressure that when you go to an exam hall, like, and I, I, I suppose MET is going to be one of the first few exams you're going to write because it yeah. comes out early in the beginning. Yeah. You won't have an exam hall, you know, like you are not experienced exam hall. So the pressure is different from what you write at your home. So it's very important that you, you know, be prepared for such a exam situation because I remember one of our profs, like my uh, coaching profs to tell us that ki, whatever score you're getting right now in your mains, you know, subtract 10 marks or 15 marks from that because that's going to be your actual marks in your mains because of your exam pressure. And that actually was true for many students, one of my friends. So it's very important that you are very, you know, mentally prepared on what's going to happen in the day of the exam. So yeah, just uh, your speed and your uh, strategy for the exam. That's it. There's nothing on the ACAT side that you have to do different from mains. If your mains preparation is good, you should be good. All right, cool. Uh, let's address the next part of wait. All right, well, let's take one more. This is related to 11th grade and uh, J prep. So you did go to CBSC. So you went for CBSC in your 11th and 12th. Uh, uh, this question I got a lot. So how do you manage your regular school curriculum and your JE prep? You mentioned briefly how you went about it, but to be more specific and any tips, tricks or whatever strategies that you implemented to make your entire process way more streamlined. Okay. So first things is that, um, come in a topic, let's just say you will have five subjects out of which three will be already covered in a coaching. So maths, chemistry, physics, the other two, let's just say my case was computer and English. So I made sure key, I paid as much attention as possible in these two classes so that I don't have to study it after school hours. And so after that, the most important study that I followed throughout the two years was that whatever school assignments I get, like let's say some, uh, to some assignment, I need to like write the answers and send it to the teachers. Or let's say some lab report I had to write, you know, and some some school assignment, something, something that was there. I made sure I finished it the day it was assigned to me. Like then and there, finish it. Because what happened is that as you keep, let's say, procrastinating it over time, it might start, you know, coming in the way of your preparations for your J. Let's say, because I remember one of my seniors, he said that that he kind of missed on his lab records during his 12th grade. 
and then what happened was this, his uh, uh, practicals 12 practicals was just before his mains so he had to spend like two one day just doing this or to say lab record rather than preparing for mains and that kind of just say you know slightly messed up his mains you can say so it's very important if whatever task are given by the school finish it then and there and just afterwards you'll, you'll be you know, mentally free also ki okay now i can just peacefully fo focus on my jp prepare the nothing in i have to do anymore otherwise i'll be you know back of my mind you know telling you oh, this is also left this is also left so try to finish every school task as soon as possible and i would say for the non you know pcm subjects focus mm -hmm. completely in your classrooms and try to make maximum of the classroom and you'll be fine that's it this is the only time management strategy i follow so i can balance both of them and it worked pretty smoothly in my 10th and 12th year okay. i'm sorry 11th and 12th yeah well, cool. uh do you want to address more questions or should we head to the next part and then address it i think works for me <laughs> all right i think we'll go to the next part and then we'll address the rest of the questions there because there are a bunch of questions about books and references that are very helpful all right so yeah, sure. all right. you mentioned about uh, your transition from 10th to 11th and how you can manage your uh, regular course work and your j prep uh, now coming to another important aspect of course which is your transition from 11th to 12th and that's where i think things also become a little more calm down because you've already experienced one year of the hustle of day prep and you're a little more balanced in your entire academic timetable scheduling and all of that so a little bit about that and uh, uh if you could share an instance of uh, or, yeah i mean i did mention a few tips and tricks of course but apart from that if you could share your uh, general day in your life when you were preparing for j uh, you mentioned before but again a little more specifically during this time period of your study okay so for me it was like things are slightly got like changed for me or say upgraded for me because <laughs> what happened was that of i as i tell you i was preparing for kpy mostly during my 11th phase completely do mostly like towards then i just got completely kpy preparation so and luckily the efforts paid out and i did clear my kpy in my 11th grade itself and uh, the rank of 871 i don't recall the exact number but somewhere around 800 something and then um, so because of which in my coaching then i got like you know promoted to the next class like the um, it's called the srg classes so i went there and then there let's just say uh, it just got uh, slightly harder because let's say rather than having two classes per day you had three classes now and then you had instead of test every two weeks you had test every week now so that kind of you know trying to keep up with that pushed me uh, to you know like put more effort now let's say when i uh, now i would say i wasn't spending any more time on any other activity it was mostly studies the entire day just school and then studies and then few minutes here and then break like spend time with your family or your sisters or just you know friends you know just spend time somewhere just get a you know mental break from all studies and then just again you know study and then sleep on time that's it i was just i would i was making sure i got 8 hours of sleep every day and um uh, what else yeah and also one more important thing was that i made sure that like by the end of my 11th my I didn't have a single backlog for my 11th grade like yeah. not a single topic which I hadn't completed like any backlog I had I made sure by the end of 11th I had completed it so that I can peacefully move on to the 12th otherwise a lot of these topics keep recurring in your 12th in you know, a topics like let's just say you you ionic concepts might come up, come up again in your uh, chemical kinetics or let's say some rbd concepts might be linked to some of the magnetism because it, uh, the question might be in such a way so it's very important you are very thorough you have done all the concepts and also you are thorough with them and also you have a frequent touch with them like it's very important you revise your 11th concepts throughout your 12th because what happens is once you to as an mains comes you are again have to okay have to study again start from zero your 11th concepts and then do your 12th preparation and then write mains which is kind of i would say ki adds on to the burden of the 12th already being there so 
it's very important ki you you spend your time some amount of time as a weekly few hours you can give to your 11th revision of few topics you'll also be in good touch with those topics and it'll be helping you in your other 12th current topics also so my mostly my schedule remained around these only like mostly just you know school time and then study and then few breaks here and there and then just um, in studies it was just um, 12th what was going on and then revise those solve those questions as my professors gave me and weekly let's say the weekends are generally time when i should study and prepare for my like revise my 11th grade concepts okay. so that was mostly my but not very i would say ki not very serious also like because i uh, was still getting 8 hours of sleep and i was still you know chilling and spending some time here and there so that's good yeah. um yeah. so i got another question before this podcast which is about uh, how exactly do you transition from going from the normal allen student to srg is it just course or what else is it and how did you basically was it just because you were scoring consistently well or was what is it like no. so i said to you batch uh, just for the viewers who don't know it's the special batch so you get more time to study with the entire allen circuit so yeah that's just a context uh, and that really helps because a lot of toppers are from srg so yeah you can go ahead yeah so one thing uh, the advantage of the god of first thing that okay more hours a day so uh, yeah now the concepts that are taught were at faster frequ- like at a much more higher frequency so or let's say the teacher spend much more time to teach you those concepts because now we are three classes in your regular two classes uh, so that was one thing that the attention the teachers tend to generally give you much more attention and spend much more time because the class size is smaller also your batchmates are the one of the you know the toppers of your entire you know branch of your coaching or whatever so uh just being with them or let's say you know when questions are discussed listening to them and spending you know discussing with them also just makes you slightly smarter like you know uh you know if you it is i mean as a saying i've heard like i've heard that you know you are the average of the five people you spend your most time with so and it does apply i've seen it many times in my life so you know there's a fact that you spend a significant amount of your day with these people and these teachers just will naturally boost your performance apart from your this time spent here one of the things uh, i found helpful was that they had as i tell as i told before only we had tests every two weeks normally in 11 but for srg batch what they did apart from this every two weeks test we had another srg test in that one week in the middle so one thing is that we had tests every week this like kept us you know continuously revising the concept because you have to continue keep revising for these tests and one one thing is that these tests also had 11 topics in them so these this helped me you know like this forced me in a way to keep in touch with these 11 topics so i didn't have to revise much towards my le- end so uh, that's one thing coming to the marks part it was absolutely horrible out of some 360 i got 40 <laughs> yeah in these tests so i was not like i was a topper but yeah again i said like again it was same as it happened in 11th grade like i was somewhere in like thousands ranks or somewhere and then i slowly with time you know as i realized okay this much effort won't give you this much marks you need to put more you need to put more so i climbed the ladder and then eventually towards the end i did made it up few times in the top but so so that's one help it gives you the extra tests and the attention and the peer group that's it all right great uh that's addressed a question from one of our viewers uh so this person says i didn't study 11th and 12th i'm taking a drop here now is ge advanced 2025 possible if i study 6 hours every day i'm not saying i could do it but i just want to know if that's possible yeah i mean yeah, if you try, it's, I wouldn't say it's not possible. Um, completely depends. Like, uh, uh, like okay, first thing, the number of hours is not something that you would say, like, you would really, you know, define your success or not, like whether you clear the exam or not. It's like, 
how well you're you know thorough with those concepts that's more important I mean, let's say three hours a day you give some you know it's fine but as long as you're done with the concepts but i would say ki now that you're like taking a drop you would be mostly what i would say ki you'll be spending a very significant amount of a day just studying so it's um what um so i can say ki yeah you can do it just i would say go through the entire process but like i would say spend your time mostly revising your concepts and solve as many papers like solving papers is the most important thing because if you're not study 11th and 12th there will be something you might have done in 11th and 12th so revise those things again it won't take you much time to grasp those concepts relatively to other people uh just revise them and then start solving questions if you get stuck in a question come back revise them go back solve question come back revise keep you know doing the cycle over over again and you would be able to clear at once there's no hard it's not that hard it's it's pretty doable even in one year all right cool uh oh. let's address another oh. question just a minute okay so another question i mean i have gotten this question more than once so it's about how do you uh i know you wouldn't particularly know it but if you could help out in any exams that you wrote last minute how do you write an exam well uh, with preparation in the last minute i don't expect you to have the right answer but at the same time i think you might still have some tips with respect to each subject what are things that you could target more on uh you know in getting more marks or something like that okay if your preparation is not that good um it's uh, you can try to just play with the strategy that's more important because what i have found personally my experience and few of my juniors and seniors is that your j j is like i would say like it's like a game for me so preparation one part of it but the end, exam attempting is one more is the one more art, entire part no matter how much you can study if your strategy of the exam you write is not right you can still mess up the exam very easily so it's very important ki the you implement the right strategy that is ki let's just say your mains i was i was telling before on here like mains of physics chemistry math so choose which topic you have like you know you have there'll be some easier topics for you, like chemistry let's just say is generally easier for in general people and then physics and then maths being the hardest it's the most common i found so take that order and then go through all the question like see ki you have done a question and then see okay read a question 10 seconds you get an answer like you know you have, you know okay this is step 1 2 3 i need to do i'll get the answer in 1 2 minutes fine attempt the question if you're not getting anything move on and forget about the question just try to maximize how many you can attempt don't have any expectation ki i need to hit 200 no just try to maximize how much ever you can that's it because uh because it's a timed exam you don't have the entire day to write you have only 3 hours so try to maximize how many questions you can attempt you'll be fine so just having a good strategy let's say 40 minutes for physics like for me it was uh physics was the easiest for me and then chemistry and then maths so for me it was like i spent 40 minutes on physics and then 20 on chemistry and then one hour on maths and then one hour i had buffer in which i can reattempt those question which i've left so physics i chose because it was a easier topic for me and it required a good amount of thinking like it gave you know you need to use your mind constantly over there then chemistry relatively you need to use lesser mind because you don't have to do calculation you just have to recall the things that were there in the book and then just analyze and just answer so you can say it kind of gave a break to my mind and 20 minutes is enough for chemistry because it's mostly just not much of calculations and let's say if i didn't complete in 20 minutes i would just move on to the maths like i made sure i didn't spend like i was constantly looking at the clock okay 20 minutes are done in chemistry i move on so then one hour on maths same strategy i followed and then one hour buffer ahead i can read now that i've skimmed through all the questions i know he in the remaining ones these are the easier ones i can solve in the remaining time so i chose those and then i uh went through all of them so that help maximize my score that's it try to maximize your score if you let's say i feel that you're underconfident like play on your topics which you are you know is your strength and which you are very thorough with that's it yeah uh someone's asked is let's see for my beneficial for neat uh if you have an idea you can share 
Yes, definitely. Because need, what I have heard is that people not because uh, sorry, the thing is that need people have not prepared that much maths, so it kind of bites them in the back because physics requires a decent amount of maths, it's a calculus and all of those things. So it's very important that you actually read H. C. Verma because it gives you that conceptual clarity and. As far what I know is that need doesn't require those very high funda cons, you know, like questions as advanced as. So H C Verma will be definitely beneficial. As well as once you have the conceptual, you know, understanding of things, things just you know hit you easily. Like you can just answer the question faster. So definitely, definitely. Uh, someone's asked for tips for organic chemistry. I would just say one word practice. That's it. That's what like when my professor used to tell, because organic chemistry has always been for me. Like I remember doing organic chemistry somewhere around October or something, and then completely forgetting it by December. So the uh, you know like how frequently you're in touch with the topic will determine how good you are. So organic question just practice as many as you can. Like there are a few books like my professor recommended me like Himanshu Pandey and. Uh, there's a black book of organic chemistry, so these books had a ton of questions, and I just kept doing, you know, like 20, 30 questions every day, and it was pretty good. And like, yeah, discuss with the prof, obviously. It's all about practice. Yeah. So a few books that you mentioned for organic chem, Himanshu Pandey was one. Anything else that you want to recommend? Uh, Himanshu Pandey. Okay, Himanshu Pandey is good for mains and neat. Uh, I said, I just said one more book was that I don't know the exact name of the book, but as my professor called it, the Black Book of Organic Chemistry. Um, that is for advanced leave. That is a bit harder book. Otherwise, NCRT is enough. And um, there's one more book. Um, I'm not able to recall the name of it, but. Uh, um, Oh, you can send it later and we'll put it in okay. the chat. Solomon's, I'm not wrong. It's called Solomon's and Solomon's. find something. Solomon's, yeah. You you mm -hmm. find it'll be good because that it had good questions and it had, um, what do you say, good theory part in it. So uh, these two books I would recommend. It's more than enough. All right. Uh, somebody's asked uh, this question. I am a class 10 to 11 moving students during these vacation days. Should I start class 11 syllabus or make my class 9 foundation strong? That's actually a pretty important question to address. Um, uh, class 9 foundation. OK, I guess he meant. OK, I would. OK, what I meant. Yeah, I think he means class 10 foundations also. Yeah, right. I would if it depends on how strong you are with concepts let's say if you aren't that well enough with the 10 concept then it's very important to go back and revise all of those but if let's just say you are decently good and you are very confident with it then uh, start with your 11th there's it's good if you start early there's no harm in starting early if you have the time Right. Uh, someone's asked, uh, Bhaya, how is Himanshu Borkar for maths? Should I solve all chapters or any coordinate geometry or only coordinate geometry? I guess the book he meant is Himanshu Pandey, but uh, that's a chemistry book, not this one. I hmm. guess there is some. Mis What's a book you would for math? Math. Um, OK, so generally there are two series people follow for math. That is either uh, Arihant or another one was uh, uh, I was uh, DC Pandey if I'm not wrong. I'm not very yeah. sure. Yeah. So I I went on with the Arihant series. Like there were seven sets of book. I I bought them and I started solving few of them. So these two books have I've been fine. So either you do DC Pandey or uh, Arihant. Do either one of these, you'll be good with them. Uh, if not that. Um, there was another book. I can't recall the name. There's a okay. There was this book called as Black Book of Mathematics. I know a lot of my professors keep telling me there's a lot of these books, but um, it was very good for advanced questions, like especially very very you know those tricky questions. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the names by any chance? Uh, I have to Google them. The search. Okay, so you can send it later. That's not an issue. We'll put it yeah, in the yeah. comments. 
All right. Fine. Um, okay. Let's finish this segment as of now. Let's yeah. go into something more interesting. A lot of people have asked about your life in IT, uh, IT Madras. So we will get into that yeah. as well. Uh, so you've sent a few pictures. I just want you to like give me a little bit about the story behind that and whatnot. Uh, yeah. Apart from that, yeah. Okay, yeah. before uh, yeah, I found the book name, it's called Vikas Gupta. Those who want for maths, the black book of maths, that's it. It's called Vikas. The author name is Vikas Gupta. So if you search on Amazon, you'll get it. It's it's a pretty cheap book. You can get it. Yeah. It was this very helpful. Like, I really, for maths, yeah. I really enjoyed solving that book. It's like one of my favorite books from my J time. So that is good. All right. I think they're the best all subjects, uh, if I'm not wrong. Chemistry we mentioned. Organic chem, inorganic, do you have anything then? Inorganic, nothing. There's nothing else required. For physical, you might require Anavasti and other ones. Anavasti, that's what you never. Yeah, for physical, that's it. Okay. Cool. Let's just, uh, I shall share the screen and. All right. Uh, I hope you can see the pictures. Yeah. All right. Okay. So there's a few pictures that you've shared from your college time at IIT Madras. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can start sharing a story about each of these pictures. This is your first one. Yeah. So yeah, this is something I'm very passionate about in my college. It's like, um, I'm part, so I'm part of this team called Avishkar Hyperloop, in which we, uh, yeah, so as the name suggests, we make hyperloops. So those who know the thing, yeah, you would be very familiar with this. It's a, a proposed idea by Elon Musk. And then a lot of teams around the world are working on this. And in India, we are the, you know, pioneering in this technology. And we have been for seven years, you know, uh, building this pause, different iteration, um, solving different problems of it. So this is, this picture is of us assembling the pod and mounting it on the tracks. Like we have a custom track for this and then testing everything and then running the pod. So, this picture really shows like, you know, yeah, an average day, we just keep building stuff. And you can see a lot of stuff, wires and suspensions and all of these things. So like different aspects, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, you have computer science for programming that stuff. Yeah. Also you have infrastructure also, like it's a civil engineering also comes into the you need to make the tracks and the tubes and stuff like that. So this is the, yes, I would say the, I spend most of my time just doing this in my college. Yeah. And you are an embedded system engineer in this, right? Yes, yes. I'm in the embedded system, so all from your, you know, low voltage stuff, PCBs to your communications and all of those things. All right. This is another picture from that. Yeah. So, yeah, this is our entire team, Avishkar. Like, so, I guess 50 plus member team. We uh, work every day and try to develop different technologies. So, in the front, all my heads are there who guide me and, like, you know, help me, me and my other team members to build this and that's our pod shell and yeah that's it i mean that's then the workspace that we have given like iit has provided us an amazing workspace like a very huge building where it's only run by students completely where we can you know every day come work there and then and provides us with you know let's say what um it's also it's completely ac you know it's a very big boon especially in city like chennai so yeah. we can come yeah. and work there peacefully and then yeah, it actually helps us a lot to, you know, build these technologies. Yeah, sir, you have, you have such good support from the college side. Just a minute. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. Okay, so you were speaking about this, and uh, I'm sorry I cut you off, but it's great to know that you know such projects are there in IT as well. And uh, would you like to explain what this is, this pod shell? Because the general public just doesn't know. Yes, I can't see your screen. Oh my God! Wait.
All right, I think you can see it now, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, the shell. It's just it's just simple carbon fiber shell. I mean, looks cool. I'm just it's just for it's a aesthetic reason that covering up the pod. So um, underneath all goes all electronics and all your like you know LIM DC DC converters and all of those things goes under it. So this was the aesthetic purpose and covering it up. So it looks good. That's it. Nothing much special about it. It's just a that's just where the thing. that's what covers the vehicle, right? That's what it is. Yeah, so yeah, and it has that. Uh, car kind of a look for aerodynamic reasons. I mean, although you move in vacuum, there's not complete vacuum still. Yeah. Uh, this is a picture you shared. Yeah. Yeah, this is my. These are my friends, like in our wing. So yeah, those are friends: Prithvi, Jatin, Nikhil, Bhuvan. So yeah, so these are this is the, these are my wing mates. One of my closest friends in college. Like I spend every day with them. Like I like to, you know. Hang out with them, and we do a lot of fun stuffs, a lot of random stuffs. You know, late night gaming till, you know, spending. Just you know, I'll be in uh, my friend's room, and I just don't realize it's four o'clock. So many things that happen, or yes. just playing football with them, and then it's just you know, there's a lot of stuffs you can do. Like, spend a lot of time with you guys. Yeah, another picture from I think student. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is again like Avishka's team that. Yeah, these are the days we pull on nighters. Like we just have certain days. Like we have to just work throughout the night. Like no sleep, full day. Just pull an on nighter and then get the work done. So obviously, night three o'clock, everyone does happen to be hungry and to keep up people's motivation. Yeah, the team has buys pizza sometimes. That's good. I mean, get free food. So. <laughs> Another photo. Yeah, uh, this is from last year's hostel night. Like so, we have these hostel nights that happen. Uh, like every hostel has a budget, so some hostels are getting. So these are again one of my closest friends, Abhinit. He's from my school, so he's in the HS department. As a mother, like uh, Jahan, Dev, uh, Devansh, and Niranjan. So yeah, it's all fun. Like I would say IIT. You know, like people ask about how IIT is, is absolutely fun. Like obviously you have a lot of studies, you have a lot of you know pressure to perform and stuff like this, but. I'll say this: There are certain days, you know, where it is a lot of time. You can chill and have just fun, you know, like dance around, do parties, treats, you know, randomly just spend the entire night out with friends. So it's just there's a lot yeah. of activities. Yeah. Right? A lot of times to engage yourself. <laughs> yeah. So that is the myth that is just studies <laughs> for anyone wondering. Yeah. It's it's very yeah. less studies, right, to be honest. <laughs> that's that's. Well, that's yeah, I've kind of, I've kind, of, I've kind of started studying less. Like compared to what Jay was, this is very, very less. I spend most of my time just, I would say, playing with friends, football, gaming, or whatever. Okay. Uh yeah, this is one of my favorite photos on my car. This was my view from my room from in my first year. So it's like those rainy days, and then like you get this beautiful view, like this entire straight road, which you know covers all the hostels. Like you can see in the side those. I would say the old-fashioned hostels, like you have open space, and then you have water tank, and then yeah, and obviously Chennai is the only time uh, time of the year when Chennai is looks good is during the monsoon. Otherwise, <laughs> 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 it's just hot entire year. Yeah. yeah. So this one of the most beautiful. Yes, the city looks beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. yeah, and this is one of I would say the most fanciest building in IITM. Uh, the our research park. So you have a lot of startups incubated here, like um, like a lot. I don't know that number, but a lot of startups, like student startups to outside startups. Like if you students who know, like recently a startup called Agnikul, yeah, got popular. They built India's first private space port. They yeah. are established here. A lot of startups from IITM itself are based here. So. IIT definitely does have a very good industry, I would say, you know, relation like there. Not just not complete academics. There's a lot of good industry connections which we have. So as part of that, we have sort of all the IITs. I guess IIT Madras has the largest research park. And this is when I got a chance to go to research park was because in the first year as part of this team called um, Startup Services ESL. So we generally uh, we are oh. name at the end of the day is to Organize an event called E Summit. So different yeah. verticals, different aim. So I was in the 
uh, startup services, which generally we cater to all the startups, like call them for the events and then talk to them and host different events related to startups. So yeah. for that, I had to one day go to Research Park and call. And then I just found this amazing picture. Like the first time when I went there, I was like in just an arm, oh, like, wow, mm -hmm. different, definitely has a lot to offer here. So, and not just that going and talking to people that also was really, really a good experience. Also, is this also where your student project Avishkar is located, or this is no, also? not it is. Um, it is related. They have this building called C5, that mm -hmm. is CFI Center for Innovation. Right. So this it's within. This is actually kind of outside the campus, like just yeah. next to the campus. So that you know, uh, a lot of people work here, like outside the campus. So whereas our building is some is very in, within somewhere inside part of the campus itself. So that's a different building completely mm, so. okay. All right, cool. okay, and that section i think it was yeah. nice to go through all of those pictures and yeah i That's mean i'm nice sure good days yeah uh someone's asked okay is there something okay never mind uh there are just a bunch of questions from i think your friends as well so um there's nothing to address there. uh okay i think we've practically addressed most of the questions uh apart from this there's nothing much i think i want to one thing i would like to address to all the students like which i personally found the most helpful to me i haven't talked about it till now because that's something which I decided to do early on in my 11th grade itself. That was key. I chose not to be on any social media platform for two years. Like mm -hmm. I had Instagram in my 10th until 10th grade. Mm -hmm. And then at the beginning of 11th, I was like, it's not worth spending your time here. I'm off this platform because initially I came up for social instance. It was helpful. But as we all know, like the current form of Instagram reels and all of those things, those are very, very time consuming. So I made sure that I'm not on any, you know, any form of social media platform, you know, away from all this content and all of these things. So, you know, any of like, it's very important. Like those who are preparing key stay away from social media platform, like any, because it is just not worth the time. Trust me. You will not remember the video, which you saw two years ago, but you will definitely remember the effort you have put two years ago. So, and if you, and let's just say for connection purposes, I just had WhatsApp. So. Whenever I felt like, okay, I need to talk to friends, just call them up and just talk for a few minutes and I'm done. That's it. There's not like I was completely isolating myself socially. No, if yeah. I needed a friend, talk to a friend, just, you know, call them, have a video call and all that definitely mm -hmm. is important. Or more importantly, spend time with your family. That's one thing I see all students don't do. So, you know, call your parents, call us and spend, be with them and spend some time with them. That's mm -hmm. really, that really motivates you also and refreshes you in a good way also. So it's very important you stay away from social media. And I've seen that a lot in IIT itself. Like after coming to IIT, I've seen there are a lot of students who don't have social media accounts, or even if they had, they have left it eventually. Okay. Because it's trust me, it's not worth of your time. You won't remember those videos. So it's <laughs> fine. Uh, okay, something is asked about I just mentioned I am currently studying 11th PCM in Punjab. Please tell me what colleges are best for me and some important tips, please. So yeah, you can give some important tips, uh, anything that you want to give. Just summarize everything up practically, whatever you said in this video. Okay, so summarize, as I said, the previous point, stay on social media. That includes YouTube also. So I'm not saying don't say YouTube. Be careful about what you're watching on YouTube. That's one thing. And uh, any other sites, like Instagram, just end, just don't keep away as possible from Instagram, have something like WhatsApp or Google chats or something that can just help you have some communication with the friends that, you know, they get notes or talk to them when if you are burnt out or something. Secondly, one important factor is, as you know, have good sleep, you know, eight hours of sleep is necessary because there is no point of, you know, studying up till two o'clock. It might sound good. You know, this, this is a weird thing among students to, you know, flex about, oh, I was up till two o'clock studying and all it's uh, it's not productive those two extra hours you were awake at the night is not productive so have eight hours of sleep and the remaining hours a day which you'll be working will be very productive secondly um yeah revise your concepts and be good with the foundations 
uh, whatever you have learned, you know, make sure your base is good for every topic and keep in touch with the topics you're frequent, the 11th and 12th concepts and organic because you need to keep revising them frequently and uh, write tests, write tests. Like even if you're getting bad marks in tests, you know, leave it. It doesn't matter. Just keep writing tests. The more frequent, you know, more you're in touch with writing tests, the better your score will definitely get. But if you keep quit writing tests, you will not get used to the sitting for three hours long than writing the test. So for I guess you said as you're in 11th grade, these are the only things you keep in mind. And I guess if you stick with these, you know, this just revise properly in these things, you should be pretty smooth. It's not like you need to, as she saw one of the timetables, like study the almost entire day. That never works. It just gets you burnt out. And yeah, trust me, burnt out are one of the worst things. I had somewhere in the mid and that completely throws you back to getting you know backlogs and all of those things so make yeah. sure you don't get burnt out so don't how ever do that. burnout situation how do you come out of it yeah just take a break man just, <laughs> it, just there's, there's no other way man you, you 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 have you know gone through so much studying for so long that your body needs a break like it needs a break to recover so just don't think about studies end it go watch a movie, go spend time with your friends, go play something, just one or two days, how much of a day you need, just take a break and then come back and come back to your track. So but having thought yeah. out, just take a break. There's no other way around it. Don't try to force to study during that time. Nothing will happen. Whatever hours you put will be useless and you'll get burnt out more after that. Uh, let's just address a few more questions. Uh, Sanat Pasan has asked, is the SP black book enough for math? I'm also preparing for Olympiads. Okay, so for maths, in terms of advance, yes, it, to an extent it is good. Uh, but coming for Olympiads, no, Olympiad maths is a different game. Uh, what do I say? E. Olympiads is, is another game. I myself prepared for physics Olympiad. Like that was a very big motivation. Like after I realized that I was not I was like, okay, <laughs> next thing I'll try is Olympiads in my 12th year. And I tried and then I, after the day of my Olympia realized by this was not going to happen with you <laughs> stick to IIT <laughs> so, I that, yeah. so it's very hard I'll be honest it's very hard I mean if you definitely uh try it there's no harm actually it's very helpful because preparing for my physics Olympia actually boosted my J uh, advanced physics like I got highest in physics out of all the three subjects and mm -hmm. significantly that carried my grade so yeah. if you actually prepare Olympias is actually a good thing because it will definitely, definitely help you in advance. Mains, not at all. It doesn't help. It won't help you in your mains to an extent, but advance definitely. So, yeah. if you are actually looking out for premium advance, Olympias, go ahead. It won't affect your preparation anyhow. But yeah, uh, don't have high expectations. I mean, depends. If you are really smart, go ahead. But it's a very difficult game compared to what advance is like. It's another level. So, yeah. Uh, you addressed this once before, but just sum it up for the newer viewers yeah jay i prepared jay once in these last few months jay means i got 99.5 ah uh, okay so uh okay the so fact that you got 99.5 show that you have actually good uh knowledge of the subject it's not like you don't have knowledge what i am guessing might be the problem is that lack of confidence or the exam strategy so as i said focus on the strategy more importantly like that was for strategy i followed was um 40 minutes physics, 20 minutes chemistry, one hour maths, and then have buffer to come back to the questions. So it's important that you have a good exam attempting strategy and not just exam attempting, every, everything around the exam. So one of the things which my professor told me during the last few days before the exam was that he don't uh, just stop studying one week before advance. Like he told, don't open your books before one week before exam. Just revise your formulas, your mistakes which you did in your, in your recent test that's it don't start topic don't revise nothing just just calm down study minimal take you know sleep on time and get so that being one thing secondly sleep on time that's one problem like sleep at 10 o'clock get up by six eight hours of sleep done because what will happen is that let's say you're used to sleeping at two o'clock but on the day exam you have a morning shift you have to get up let's say six in the morning go to the exam hall and then write the exam first of all you're sleep deprived on top of that you're not following a regular everyday cycle. It's the circadian rhythm, right? That'll definitely mess up your exam. You might black out in the middle of the exam or something. That will happen in my first mains. <laughs> I kind of blacked out because I didn't have a good, I didn't have a good sleep 
the one night before that because uh, yeah the sleep, my schedule wasn't good so after listening after experience it first hand and my prof telling me i made sure okay this didn't happen for my advance and also other things also like smaller smaller details i have to make sure key that you are used to sitting for the 3 hour stretch that is let's say for advance 9 to 12 and then 2 to 5 that you can sit 3 hours continuously without you know needing to go to washroom or something or like anything you should be able to do that because in actual exam you need to do that but let's say in the middle you get to feel the urge to go to the washroom man it will add pressure to you and then a lot of other things so just every day give tests from 3 to 12 or 2 to 5 these two slots and mains is like what 9 to 12 and um 3 to 6 are not wrong so that is one thing and on the day of exam eat minimal food like don't overeat that you fall asleep in exam and don't mm-hmm. under eat that you get the exam or eat right and eat something light don't eat some oily food or something like this eat something simple bread or corn flakes or something milk that's it and if you keep keep thing care of all the things around the exam keep a calm mind your exam you'll do an excellent and you'll definitely improve your grade yeah uh i've gotten uh, quite a question about this so i'll ask this as well how are nitin ji sir was on the white right do you know this um i'm not familiar with nitin ji sir acha uh, there might be another profile i uh, let me confirm the name uh, in the yeah, meantime okay. yeah. nitin which if i'm not wrong they might be confusing with him okay yeah so let me sir like he's a very renowned physics professor from kota like if you know mm-hmm. those who have seen the factory nitin vijay nitin NV vijay sir. like if mm-hmm. those who have seen kota factory they would know ki the main professor the uh, from kota factory is based on his character so those who yeah i mean definitely if you find his i definitely found his lecture i i very helpful like for a while i did see his videos on youtube and that was really helpful for me also so he's an amazing prof like for let's just say if you really want to understand the fundamentals and he does sometimes touch on uh, some hard topics so nv sir's lectures are one of the good ones like i mean not just good best best in the country for che related preparations and all like and he has a very good so and where can you find them on youtube itself i guess yeah youtube will definitely find these videos or uh, if not there then um, i generally found a telegram link like one of my friends sent me a telegram link for all the recorded videos so i got it from there but i found the same videos again on youtube also so you know whichever yeah. you can find you'll definitely find these videos uh if not that there's another sir i guess ashish arora sir his videos are also really good like yeah. physics galaxy his yeah. not his videos but his, his the tips which he used to give me like he used to give a lot of tips on improving your performance in exams like mm-hmm. sleeping eating and all those things those are amazing and they really really helped me a lot like a lot of my exam strategy help came from ashish uh, yeah. so definitely these two channels of physics is recommended in my opinion what about other what? subjects any channels let's just quickly touch that and maths no i didn't do any channel i just well, i just did two things my coaching material and arihant more than enough because my coaching material covered every previous year questions and arihant had such a vast you know number of questions that i never was i didn't have to complete all of them so i was always had some question to do so these two and yeah, also a black book of uh, uh, vikas gupta the book that's black book uh, okay. sorry maths maths and okay. coming to chemistry just stick to uh, this ncrt for inorganic physical in you know, ncrt is more than enough but you can try few let's say get done with the questions you can go anavasti and coming to organic himanshu pandey all of this you need a lot of books so i would recommend going for a reference book for organic uh someone has asked me a question i'll just briefly address that uh yeah i mean <laughs> manipal is very nice i am currently studying in manipal and uh, i think i'll put another video about that. i've done a video about that so you can check it out on my channel i've done an ama session about manipal i mean you can check it out it's a great honestly i love being in manipal no complaints just love it all right uh how many hours per day do you study in iit yo yeah this is a good question yeah how many hours do you study per day in iit 
like today it was zero <laughs> and i have a quiz in two days okay i have a quiz in two days and today it was zero i just for morning was working in my workspace i came back hmm. and went to my friends room and just loafed there i didn't study i'll be honest uh, okay. yeah so it is some days zero but let's just say there are some days i just uh, feel like i know some exam might come up or some back assignment or some work you know i have to do it can go till let's say i can start early it can go let's say how long if i some days i spent like 8 9 mm-hmm. hours like i'll go to library and study there it just depends what work mm-hmm. i have there's no you know uh, continuously okay 3 hours a day every day no sometimes most of the days like now it is zero cuz <laughs> some yeah. work will be so that's a relief <laughs> anyway <laughs> no. <laughs> uh no someone asked about uh, exams like bitsat so he already mm-hmm. mentioned bitsat and met and exams like that so you can scroll a little back and rewatch that uh but yeah i think he's already mentioned that is iit m as stuff as je there is no iit m exam there is just iit advanced how do you overcome stress do you have an answer for the second stress um talk to your friends talk to your family that's it i was saying okay. that's what really helped me like video calling my friends really was a you know good break and it relieved stress like you know you talk to your friends bro we both are going through the same problem bro when i got this marks i got this marks yeah <laughs> it's nice you know uh, talking to your friends or uh, just go for a walk you know like go cycling go walk go play football or something with your friends call do something or you know if you don't like i was a big you know movie you know i'm a big i love to watch a lot of movies you know a lot of nolan type movies or something like that so if i some day i was just like you know i'm done let's say i wrote a 3 hour long exam i just come back after the exam my mom is like what happened i'm like now nah, i'm just done i just go to the tv watch 3 hours like just see the movie for 3 hours long and then that's it and then pack the entire day nothing no studies that day so if i'm stressed just i'm not studying because it's not going to be productive any how so um someone spamming this question again and oi chai or coffee which is better for night studies um coffee definitely chai i like i like to drink tea in the morning but when it is on lighters coffee is the <laughs> go you have to go for coffee there's nothing there's no other way out all right uh okay cool uh someone i'll just address the last few questions and we'll wrap it up any other questions you can all hit us up in the comments and we'll reply uh robotics branch ke liye kaun si colleges achhi hai india mein uh i think obviously the iits are pretty good the old iits are good and uh, private colleges uh i'm aware of mit having a good uh mechatronics branch as well so i can speak for manipal uh Yeah, I mean, as such, you can surely research and find out. But MIT, from my personal front, surely has a great uh, robotics branch, and it also has student projects like Sahil mentioned about Avishkar. We have quite a few. So, if you're looking for private, uh, I think MIT is one of your best options when it comes to robotics. And yeah, you can also mention anything about. Uh, yeah, private. what I, my friends are there in Bits. So definitely, Bits is obviously one of the prime institutes, and when it comes to private sector. I know. I mean, there are other if me- coming to mechatronics branch. As far I know, one of them is there in VIT Chennai. There was a friend of mine who was in mechatronics, and he definitely was a very enthusiastic about. It. Like he was in the formula team of uh, VIT Chennai, and he did a lot. Like currently, I guess he's pursuing masters in USA. So if you're really into about robotics, I mean, it's fine. Whatever college you go, as long as you're enthusiastic, you'll find people there, and you'll get a good thing. So. uh yeah try to get the top ones if not private ones also good like if not iit is private ones are like excellent like as i said ki they have their own formula team even if mit itself has their own hyperloop team if not just iit yeah, so yeah. and they have the racing team also right you are part yeah. of it if i'm not wrong part of the racing team yeah so even if it's private colleges you have great opportunities like at least the top private colleges so bits mit or uh, vit these are good options that you can pursue outside of uh government colleges all right uh okay i think uh, a lot of the other questions are kind of address someone's asked if internet speed is good enough so you can answer that yeah it's pretty good i can download like a 30 i just downloaded a 30 gb game 
yesterday so yeah in 3 hours i was done so it's pretty good and my friend there's a one of my friends who just keeps gaming the entire day so he has never faced any issue so <laughs> uh fine i think that's pretty much it a lot of the other questions are very subjective and uh, hypothetical questions if you got in here what would you do if you got in here i don't think we need to address that as of now uh all right you'll figure it out there's no problem yeah you will figure it out uh yeah i think that's pretty much it uh is there anything you want to address uh, as such i mean nothing special just those guys are preparing for j Yes, definitely the competition getting hard every year. You have to put much more, um, you know, much more hours. You know, every now it's just getting harder and harder. So it's uh, you need to put more hours, more reference book, more, you know, just a more grind now. But it just don't get too much, you know, caught up in this race. Like it just don't get like and fall into you know, a lot of stress, burnout, and all of these things. Those things are gonna just you know reduce your performance. try to you know have a good balance between you know sleep and all of this because these things small things like you know in my what i have found is that these smaller things which you don't generally look at it sleep food and you know re- resting time and all of these things these are the ones that compound over the time in the long run let's like those who have read atomic habits would know this law right these small small things which you generally don't just look at it these are the things that are compound over the longer run and in the finally let's say you know if you have done these things properly in two years and then you will see the effect ki 12th mein ki yes your results are significantly better than those who didn't follow this so it's just this thing just have a good balance and try to don't have you no know, stress out and all of these things you'll do amazing that's it it's just and it's fine if you don't get a good rank i, I mean come on if you like say look at 753 i'm not getting cs anywhere good also so I think uh, you can think about not that good also but cs 750 is still a good rank for electrical and other things so yeah it's just chill man this uh, this is not the end you know a lot of people just get stressed if they don't get iit and all of this thing kya hoga mera there's a very the uh, life is even longer like now if i ask me i never think about what happened in my two years of iit <laughs> like preparation now i realize bro the race is even longer and even more you know weirder and it's abstract yeah, it has different my- things that you address now you so, you have even yeah, entered the life basically it's just yeah exactly a life the life after j is completely different it's actual is the actual life so yeah. man it's just this all part awesome. man just yeah once yeah, you don't yeah. so don't that's actual life. yeah so don't worry just give exam and then whatever college you get take it and this work harder that's yeah, it absolutely and yeah also uh, yeah i think uh, we have answered it all <laughs> which Uh, all the same questions. Somebody's just mentioned this. Don't let Jay crack you, bro. Telling you you will be fine <laughs> wherever you end up. Just <laughs> consistent efforts, and you will be fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like a lot of my friends who didn't clear Jay, they're doing way better than me right now. I'll be honest. Yeah, so you'll do good. Okay. Don't worry. Yeah. All right then. Fine. I think. All right then, guys. Yeah, I guess one more thing. Yeah, my yeah, she's put a lot of effort for these things. You know, my friend. So. Yeah, guys, subscribe to our channel and then you know, give a like and yes, yeah, like, subscribe. No, uh, yes. but <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> this is yeah. the first video of this series, and uh, I thought yeah, I'd try this. So, yeah, I'm sure you did ask for help in these senses. So, yeah, I mean, I hope I can help, and uh, I will be putting a lot of educational content forward as well. Uh, I have put it before, and I continue to do it through other mediums, which is uh, I run a company called Oilgasm, where I do podcasts like this with industry experts of different fields. So honestly, yeah, uh, that is my aim, and I'm so happy to have Sahil uh, on the podcast today. You were an amazing guest, and uh, you give a lot of good information. And uh, I'm assuming that people with further questions can drop them down in the comments, and you will be answering them. Uh, someone asked one more question. I'm going to just ask you: Why are do people do dating and all in IIT, brother? Do you think IITians are not humans? I know that the ratio is bad here, like one of the worst. <laughs> But still, uh, we do get some. So those who get lucky, yeah, <laughs> they do get. If not, man, I mean, you have dating apps and other things, social media. You can go around just 
so it's fine uh, and yeah it is an important aspect of life don't think that bhai yahan par padhai hoti nahi bhai yahan par majority people are i mean not majority good amount of people are dating so no it's, it's not just only yeah, studies here in college you have to yeah it's an engineering college yeah you it's a very important aspect of life so okay uh, one more question uh, does being in top matter in coaching no nope. i can tell a first hand experience because there was this one guy in my coaching he was not srg batch he was a regular batch he got a crazy rank in mains so after getting crazy batch rank he started preparing with us and then he got the best rank among all of the srg batch like he's the highest from this <laughs> so yeah he was not in the srg batch he was like no one he came, comes out of nowhere tops gets more rank than me anybody in my batch and then, yeah just is an id bomber right now so well <laughs> no nah, it's it's how much effort you put how many hours are you ready to you know not hours absolutely. but how much effort you ready to put absolutely uh sail are you looking at the chat the comment section not really <laughs> but i i would expecting my a lot of stuff to be there <laughs> No, I'm in Manipal College dating allowed. Yes, sir. Of course, it is. It's allowed. Don't worry. The only college I think it's not allowed is VIT. But uh, no comments. <laughs> no comments. But it's not oh, allowed. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people who are dating there. So don't worry about it, guys. You don't have to worry about all of this. You will be fine. You will. You will definitely do it. So, yeah. yeah exactly there is nothing to ha huh. okay i think that's pretty much it uh, we have come to the end of the podcast mit yeah. vlog kar kar dungi bhai subscribe kar lo i will show you put and uh, yeah, subscribe and support my friend she's doing a thank lot of you. effort yeah yeah this is uh, just one of the many things i'll be doing so if you guys have any suggestions do put them in the comments and we will go ahead with it uh yeah i think that's all done uh sahil i hope you have looked at the chat and because you have a lot yeah, of questions i'm going i'm going through yes i'm going through <laughs> yeah, the latest chat yeah <laughs> i'll i'll do i'll see i'll see well right. so uh they want to extend it little bhai questions to pooch lo like kaise extend karungi <laughs> ठीक है फाइन ऑल राइट आई थिंक दैट्स प्रेडी मच इट वी विल एंड दिस पॉडकास्ट विथ दिस बींग सेड एनी अदर क्वेश्चन यू ऑल हैव यू कैन पुट दम इन द कॉमेंट सेक्शन एंड वी विल आंसर दैम दैट्स प्रेडी मच इट गाइज थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग एंड गुड लक विद ऑल ऑफ योर एग्जामिनेशन यू विल ऑल डू वेल एंड डोंट वरी आई आई टी इज नॉट द एंड ऑफ इट जे इज नॉट द एंड ऑफ इट देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड आउटसाइड ऑफ ऑल दैट सो या डू वेल एंड आई होप दिस सेशन हेल्प्ड That's all. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave it.